Hi everyone and welcome back to Book Club with Ms. Dub. Today we're going to be diving into chapter 13 of The City of Ember by Jean Dupro. So if you're one of my students, as always, please put me on full screen with closed captionings. Um, close out any secret tabs or windows you might have open and don't forget to put those headphones on. All right, let's go ahead and get started with chapter 13. This um, chapter is called Deciphering the Message. And so vocab word, decipher. To me, it means to succeed, to succeed in understanding, interpreting, or identifying something. Okay, deciphering the message. Dune headed for home, and Lena went in the opposite direction across Harkin Square. The little group of believers had gone, but the protesters, with their signs, continued to pace back and forth. A few of them were still shaking their fists in the air and yelling, but most of them tramped silently, looking tired and discouraged. Lena felt a bit that way too. Once Dune said he'd seen a door, she was sure that the door he'd found and the door and the instructions were the same. She had had such hopes for that door in the pipeworks, but hoping so hard had made her jump to conclusions. She'd gone a little too fast. She always went fast. Sometimes it was a good thing and sometimes not. Now, Dune thought the instructions were nothing important after all. She didn't want him to be right. She didn't believe he was even now, but her thoughts felt like a mess of tangled yarn. She needed someone wise and sensible to help her sort things out. She headed for Gloam Street. Though it was nearly six o'clock, she found Clary still in her workroom at the far end of the greenhouse at green, of, the, of Greenhouse One. It was a small crowded room. Pots and trowels cluttered a high table at one end. Above the tables were shelves full of bottles of seeds and boxes of string, wire, and various kinds of powders. Clary's desk was a rickety table littered with scraps of paper, all of them covered with notes in her neat, round handwriting. Two rickety chairs went with the rickety table, one on each side. Lena sat down facing Clary. I have to tell you something important, she said. I have to tell you some important things, she said, and they're all secret. All right, said Clary, I can keep secrets. She was wearing a patched shirt that had faded from blue to gray. Her short brown hair was tucked behind her ears and a bit of leaf clung to it on the right-hand side. She folded her arms in front of her on the desk. She looked square and solid. The first thing is, Lena began, that I found the instructions, but Poppy had chewed them up. The instructions, said Clary, I'm not familiar with them. Lena explained. She went on to explain everything, how she'd shown the instructions to Dune, what they had figured out, how he'd searched the pipeworks and found the door, and what he'd seen when he'd what what he had seen when he opened the door. Clary made an unhappy sound and shook her head. This is very bad, she said, and sad too. I remember when the mayor was first starting out. He has always been foolish, but not always wicked. I'm sorry to know that the worst side of him has won out. Clary's dark brown eyes seemed to grow deeper and sadder. There is so much sadness, sorry, there is so much darkness in Ember, Lena. It's not just outside, it's inside us too. Everyone has some darkness inside. It's like a hungry creature. It wants and wants and wants with a terrible power. And the more you give it, the bigger and hungrier it gets. Lena knew. She had felt it in Looper's shop as she hovered over the colored pencils. For a moment, she felt sorry for the mayor. His hunger had grown so big, it could never be satisfied. His huge body couldn't contain it. It made him forget everything else. Clary let out a long breath and a few of the scraps of paper on her desk fluttered. She ran her fingers through her hair, felt the bit of leaf and plucked it out. And then she said, about these instructions. Oh yes, said Lena. They might be important or they might not be. I don't know anymore. I'd like to see them if you'd let me. Of course you can see them, but you'll have to come home with me. I'll come now if that's all right, said Clary. There's plenty of time before lights out. 
Lena led Clary up the stairs and into her new bedroom at Mrs. Mrs. Murdo's. Nice room, Clary said, looking around with interest. And I see you have a sprout. A what? said Lena. Your bean, said Clary, pointing at the little pot of dirt on the windowsill. Lena bent to see what Clary was talking about. Sure enough, the dirt was heaving up a little. She touched the pushed up part, brushed away the dirt, and discovered a pale green loop. It looked like a neck, as if a creature in the bean were trying to escape, but hadn't yet managed to pull its head out. Of course, she already knew that plants grew from seeds, but to have put that flat white bean in the dirt, to have almost forgotten about it, and now to see it forcing its way up into the air? It's doing it, she said. It's coming to life. Clary nodded, smiling. It still amazes me every time I see it, she said. Sorry, it's very hot in here. Lena brought out the instructions and Clary sat down at the table to study them. She puzzled over the patchwork of scraps for a long time, tracing the lines with her fingers, murmuring the parts of the words. What you've figured out so far seems right to me, she said. I think ip orc must be pipe works. So, so here. here. And Iverbank must be riverbank. So this bit must be down riverbank. And there's a big space here to edge. Edge of what? Let's see. I wonder. And does it mean down riverbank as in walk alongside the river? Yes, I think so, Lena said. Or does it mean go down the riverbank itself, down toward the bank, toward the water? Maybe edge means edge of the water. I, it couldn't mean that. The bank could go straight down like a wall. You couldn't go down to the edge of the water, you'd fall in. Lena pictured the dark, swift water and shivered. This word, said Clary, putting a finger on the paper, Maybe it isn't edge. Let's see. Right here. Maybe it could be something else. It could be hedge or pledge, or those don't make much sense, but it could be ledge or wedge. Lena saw that Clary was no better at deciphering the puzzle as she was than she was. She sighed and sat down on the end of her bed. It's hopeless, she said. Clary straightened up quickly. Don't say that. This torn up piece of paper is the most hopeful thing I've ever seen. Do you know what this word is? She pointed to the top of the paper. Eagers. Someone's name, isn't it? The title would be instructions for Eagerston or maybe Eagersman or something like that. The person the instructions were for. I don't think so, said Clary. If you add an S to this word right here where this tear in the paper is, you get egress. Do you know what that word means? No, said Lena. It means the way out. It means the exit. The title of this document is Instructions for Egress or Egress. When Clary left, there was still over an hour before lights out. Lena raced across the city to Greengate Square. She glanced in the window of the small items shop where Dune's father was reaching for something on a shelf and then she dashed up the stairs and knocked on the door of Dune's apartment. Right away, she heard quick steps and Dune opened the door. I have something exciting to tell you, Lena said breathlessly. Come in then. Lena went across the cluttered room to stand by a lamp. She pulled from her pocket a tiny piece of paper on which she had written, Egress. Look at this word, she said. 
It's from the title of the instructions. Someone's name, said Dune. No, said Lena. It means to be egress with two S's. I showed the instructions to Clary and she told me. It means the way out. The way out, cried Dune. Yes, the way out, the exit. It's instructions for the way out of Ember. So it is real, Dune said. It is. We have to figure out the rest, or as much of the rest as possible. Can you come now? He darted into his room, emerged with his jacket, and they ran. All right, said Lena. They were on the floor of the blue-green room at Mrs. Murdo's. Let's take the first line. She moved her finger along it slowly. So I'm just gonna point to where they are. Exp, riv, ip, orc. We know that ip orc is pipe works, she said. X could be expand or explore or expose. There's a big space between exp and the rest, said Dune. There must be more words in there. But who knows what they are? Let's see. Let's move on. Lena swept her straggly hair impatiently back from her face. Look at number two. Stun marked with E by er j. Lena put her finger on stun. What could that be? Maybe piston, said Dune. That's part of a machine, like the generator. Or maybe it's, maybe it's astonish. Or it could be, I bet it's just plain stone, said Lena. There's a lot of stone in the pipeworks. Dune had to admit that this was probably right. So then he said it would be stone marked with E. And he frowned at the next bit. This must be river's edge. Stone marked with E by the river's edge. They looked at each other in delight. E for egress, cried Lena. E for exit. They bent over the document again. There's not much left of this next line, said Dune. Okay, so they're on three. Three, add a down iver ink to edge a per eight low. Just this part, which must say down river bank to edge something. Edge of water would make sense, but right after edge, there's app. What would that be? Dune sat down. Dune sat back on his heels and gazed up at the ceiling as if the answer might be there. Lena muttered, down river bank to edge, edge, she thought. She thought of Clary's guesses about that line. Maybe it's ledge, she said, down river bank to ledge. There could be a ledge down near the water. Yes, that must be right. There's a stone marked with E and down the river bank at that point, there's a ledge. I think we're getting it. Once again, they crouched over the page, their heads close together. Okay, Dune said, line four. Space, ax to the water, find door, a bow, cur, key, hind, small steel, pan, the right, rem, e, open, do. This is where it says door, Lena said. Somehow the door is by the ledge. Does that make sense? And there's that small steel pan. What can that mean? What, what would a pan have to do with anything? But look, but look, Lena tapped the paper urgently. Here it says K-E and here it says E-Y. It's talking about a key. But what is it a door to, said Dune, sitting back. Remember, we thought about this before, a door in the river of the in the bank of the river would lead under the pipeworks. Lena pondered this. Maybe it leads to a long tunnel that goes way out beyond Ember and then gradually, sorry, and then gradually up and up until it comes out at the, at the other city. What other city? Dune glanced up. 
at the drawings tacked to the walls of Lena's room. Oh, he said, you mean that city? Well, it could be, Dune shrugged. I suppose so, or it could be another city exactly like this one. That was a gloomy thought. Both of them felt their spirits sink a little at the idea. So they turned back to the task of deciphering. Next line, said Lena. But Dune sat back on his heels again. He stared into the air, half smiling. I have an idea, he said. If we do find the way out, we'll need to announce it to everyone. Wouldn't it be splendid to do it during the singing? Stand up there in front of the whole city and say we found it. It would be, Lena said, but that's only two days away. Yes, we have to hurry. They were bending again over the glued down fragments when Dune remembered that he should check the time. It was a quarter to nine. He barely had time to get home. Come again tomorrow, said Lena. And while you're at work, look for the rock marked with an E. That night, Dune had trouble sleeping. He couldn't find a comfortable position on his bed. It seemed to be made up of nothing but lumps and wrinkles, and it squeaked and groaned every time he moved. He flailed around so much that the noise woke his father, who came into his room and asked, what is it, son? Nightmares? No, said Dune. I just can't sleep. Are you worrying? Are you frightened of anything? Dune wanted to say, yes, father. I'm worried because the mayor of our city is taking for himself the things that people need. And I'm afraid because any day our lights could go out forever. I'm worried and afraid a lot of the time, but I'm also excited because I think there is a way out and we might find it. And all those feelings are whirling around in my head, which makes it hard to sleep. He could have told his father everything. His father would have plunged in with great enthusiasm. He would have helped them decipher the instructions and expose the mayor's thievery. He would have even come down into the pipeworks and helped search for the rock marked with an E. But Dune wanted to keep these things to himself for now. Tomorrow, the guards would announce that, that an alert young boy had uncovered the mayor's crime that, and his father, hearing the announcements along with the rest of Ember, would turn to the person next to him and say, that's my son they're talking about, my son. So in answer to his father's question, he simply said, no father, I'm all right. Well, then see if you can't lie still, said his father. Good night, son, he added, and he closed the door. Dune smoothed out his covers and pulled them up to his chin. He closed his eyes, but still he couldn't sleep. So he tried a method that had often worked for him before. He would choose a place he knew well, the school, for instance, and imagine himself walking through it, picturing it as he went in minute detail. Often his thoughts would wander, but he would always bring them back to the imaginary journey. And something about doing this would often make him sleepy. This night, he decided to retrace his explorations of the pipeworks. He held his mind to the task for a long time, picturing with all the clarity he could muster everything he had seen in that underground realm, the long stairway, the tunnels, the door, the path along the river, the rocks along the river. He felt sleep drawing closer, a heaviness in his limbs. But just as he was about to give into it, he saw in his mind's eye the wrinkled rocks that bordered the river at the west end of the pipeworks, the rocks whose strange ridges and creases had reminded him of writing. His eyes flew open in the dark. His heart began to hammer and he gave up on sleeping and lay in a state of terrible impatience for the rest of the night. And that is the end of chapter 13. Thanks so much for joining me. We will be um, adding chapter 14 very, very soon in just a minute, actually. So please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It makes a big difference to us. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I can't wait to read again with you soon. Bye.